Jumping over to the NFC South, we're going to take a look at the Atlanta Falcons. An interesting year with the quarterback position. Obviously, started off with Marcus Mariota. He then got benched, threw his toys out the pram. We had Desmond Ritter come in. Do you, do you think Desmond Ritter showed enough, Tom, that he could potentially be the starter next year? He wasn't it for me. I think it would be a huge detriment to the Falcons' offense that they built in these young skill players if they committed to him rather than trying to improve. You know, that division is there for the taking. Tom Brady's probably moving on from the books. The Saints are in flux. The Panthers don't have a quarterback or a head coach. They need to make a decision right now and really go for it. It felt like they've had grander aspirations and they've been able to fulfill over the last couple of years. You draft Kyle Pitts and Drake London and then turn into a run-first team. That wasn't by design. That was because Marcus Mariota couldn't get anything going, and Desmond Ritter clearly wasn't good enough at the start of the season. This is a team who were 19th in passing DVOA. They were third in rushing DVOA, so it felt like they just they found something they were good at, and they just clinged on to it for dear life. Yeah, absolutely. I think that... Desmond Ridder showed enough for me that he could potentially be the option next year, but I don't think he showed enough that it should stop you looking for an upgrade elsewhere, whether that's a veteran you bring in or whether that's in the draft. Yeah, um, he was he was 35th in yards per attempt over the three starts he had. Bottom three in fantasy points over expected in that period with minus 18.2. So it definitely wasn't incredible. Yeah, one of the bright spots as we went down towards the uh, the end of the season, Tyler Algier, he finished the season with four consecutive top 16 weeks. Do you think he showed enough that we can buy into him as a competent running back for next year? I think so, because this is one of those teams who've got more problems than just try to solve stuff like this you know they need to solve their quarterback they need to solve their defense they need to solve their offensive line they need some wide receiver depth because behind drake london it's just a bunch of guys so there is a chance for tyler algier really has a clean run at things in 2023 he was fifth in dvoa amongst running backs amongst running backs with 100 attempts or more he ranked third best in russian epa and his yards after contact was the sixth highest so this is a guy who was playing really well, and I do believe that he could continue that. Uh, I'd just be a little bit wary about another veteran coming in and maybe taking some of the work. You know, we saw Corderell Patterson was there, and we both love him, but it just felt like he didn't quite have the legs to be able to take a huge amount of work back from Tyler Algier this, this year. But maybe a younger veteran would be able to do that. Yeah, for one, one year too many for Corderell Patterson, unfortunately. Um <laughs> But you, you hinted at the other kind of core piece in, in the receiving room. Jake London had some unbelievable target share numbers, had some unbelievable kind of underlying stats, flashed at times, but didn't really have the, you know, overall mind-blowing rookie season that some would have hoped. Wide receiver 51 in points per game. Do you think that we can buy into potentially, a you know, a sophomore breakout if there's an upgrade at quarterback? 100%. And I think that's something that I'll be fully doing in best ball this year. It was a case of Drake London showed us how talented he is. He showed us that even in a run first offense, he can command an okay target share at times. And it just, this season felt worse because he came out red hot. He averaged 13 PPR points over the last four games. And over the first three games, he was the wide receiver 14. But in the middle, everything just kind of dipped down. And it was like, early on, like I touched on before, this team didn't necessarily set out to be run first. They were averaging 26 pass attempts over the first four games. And then for the rest of the season, it dropped down to 22. So they really shied away from the passing and that hurt him a lot, but I'd be fully backing on him for next year. And we've we've hinted at the elephant at the rim, but we haven't talked about it yet. Cole Pitts, he's still a you know top two round startup pick in most most leagues he's probably still going to be a top five tight end in in best ball next year are you investing and believing that this Carl Pitts breakout is is going to come it's really difficult for me I you know I play dynasty but I don't watch a lot of college football so I don't have that kind of attachment to him of having seen him in the college game as much as, as other people and for all the problems that there were at quarterback and on the offense in two years, he's got three career touchdowns. 
put that in perspective, Michael Pruitt scored that many this year on the Falcons. Jelani Woods scored that many this year on a bad offense. Jordan Aiken scored that many this year on a bad offense. Isaiah Likely, Will Disley, Tommy Tremble, all bit part tight ends who managed to score three touchdowns. So we see the flashes with Kyle Pitts, and I've no doubt that the talent is there. But I think next year I'd be willing to take players like Dallas Goddard ahead of him. I'd probably even consider TJ Hawkinson ahead of him if he signs with the Vikings long term. <laughs> <laughs>